The true definition of a gangsta? Avon's characterization was one of the first indicators I had that I was going to love this show. From all the buildup McNulty gives him in Fallon's courtroom, the viewer is led to expect some bloodthirsty terror, something closer to Marlowe. Avon certainly has that in him, but he doesn't let it dominate his personality. When it's time for business, he's disciplined and ruthless. When it's time to throw a barbecue for the projects, he'll throw on an apron. The writing and the performance both find the perfect balance so the character doesn't feel schizophrenic. They're just contrasting parts of a complete individual. In season one at least, Avon doesn't let what he does for a living consume him and it keeps him from tainting the affable, somewhat loving person at his core. At the same time, he has no illusion about who he is in the larger scheme of things. In that way, he's happier, more well-adjusted person than McNulty or Stringer. McNulty destroys himself by letting his professional life steamroll over his personal happiness, while Avon tries his best to balance both. Stringer fights futility against his true nature and origin, while Avon proudly accepts that he is what West Baltimore made him. Thinking about what he was like in season one, it's clear that prison changes him for the worse. It's a real traumatic experience when you think about it, despite the KFC and video games. He watches D'Angelo move away from him and deeper into drugs, and he tries to help him in the only way he knows how, a clever and cold-blooded criminal scheme. I mean, the guy's not a drug counselor. When D'Angelo ultimately dies, he blames himself for it, and this happens while his criminal empire slowly slips out of his grasp, culminating in the towers he based his hard-earned rep on being split with his crosstown rival. As a king who was so used to being in control of his kingdom, that long year of complete powerlessness was enough to drive him slightly insane. And that's why he's so hellbent on making war when he returns to the streets in season three. This brings him into conflict with Stringer, and the difference was hinted at in season one and articulated in season two becomes a fissure between the two that tears apart everything they built. Both are equally at fault for falling victim to completely opposite flaws. Avon may be happy because he accepts who he is, but he carries it to the point of short-sightedness when he decides to go to war with Marlowe. He's more than happy to bet his life on the whims of the game. He's ecstatic to do it when he has no real reason to. Stringer's destroyed by the opposite problem, an overabundance of ambition. In the end, Avon's loyalty ran deeper though. I was initially shocked that Avon lied to Brianna to cover up Stringer's murder of D'Angelo, but he drives home how truly close the two are, closer as brothers than most actual brothers. Whereas Stringer came to the point of betraying Avon on his own, under pressure from Prop Joe, but still of his own accord. Avon was essentially forced into betrayal by Brother Mozoon. He was actually willing to pay for Stringer's mistake himself, which I doubt Stringer would do in the same position. Once Stringer actually is dead, the same war Avon found such joy in means nothing to him. He can barely pick up a gun, the purest symbol of his power he could ask for. It's the kind of thing he could only realize when it's too late. And that's why he looked relieved when McNulty comes for him for the last time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more.